Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run, as they were playing as Blue Baby. So today's Daily Run was, I would say, very interesting, and not only because it had a very interesting stat distribution, we had a lot of speed, we had a lot of range, we had quite a bit of damage, but maybe not as much tier delay, so despite of all of that, the run kind of felt sluggish, but at the same time we were actually outputting quite a lot of DPS and we were kind of dealing with a lot of rooms very efficiently. So it, it just felt weird in that regard, but maybe in another regard as well. Like, this usually happens in many runs, obviously, depending on the decisions that you make and depending on which items you pick, um, uh, pick up and maybe in which rooms you go first, it can have a very different effect on the run. And even though everyone plays the same seed, it can turn out that someone has a really good run and someone has a really bad one. Well, in this particular case, I think this was a bit more pronounced, and especially in the first lore, because there's a few ways you can really go with your decisions. So the very first choice here is Monstrous Toot. And you might say, why would you ever use that item? It's a horrible item. And to some extent, you're right. But it has, I would say, very neat effect and that is when it actually drops down not only does it do damage to enemies it also triggers a small explosion and that small explosion can be useful because then what you can do is isolate one enemy just kind of wait him in the room kind of I would say manipulate the enemy to go in the direction where you want it to go and then drop monster Toot on it so you can actually generate like a mini bomb for free. And to some extent that could have been very useful in this one because we didn't have a lot of bombs up until the third or maybe even the fourth floor. And you never know, like if you saw for example on the second floor, I actually used one of the bombs to get to the second secret room and then of course if you had monster Toot in that situation you could have used that and that would have allowed you not only to go to the devil deal but also get a very good item in this case, so possess tears or I think the Eye of Bilal, that's what the item is called. So that's obviously something I would say that could have a very positive effect on the run as a whole. But there was another choice, and that is you had one key. And now the decision is, do you want to go to the library or do you want to go to the shop? And from my understanding, the shop usually spawns away from the spawn. And the library, if you see it near the spawn, I mean, I mean if you see a locked key door and it's near to the spawn, it's usually going to be a library. So I kind of did that and I kind of went in that direction. I opened up the library and of course in there were two books. One of them I don't think was consequential, it was an Economicon I think. And the other one was how to jump. And now we have a choice. So do we stick with free bombs essentially or do we stick with a basic clean ability to fly so we can get over rock? Well, I felt like the ability to fly in that situation would have been a little bit better, uh, just because, you know, it does allow you maybe to reach a little bit more consumables, and you never know, it has some adverse effects, it does allow you to maybe get over pits, it just felt like it was going to be a bit of a safer option. Well, having free bombs is definitely great, uh, on a 3 room charge, I'd say it's not really all that good, especially when you have to consider the caveat that you have to lure the enemy into a position. So I decided to stick with how to jump, and because I took it, later on I actually managed to find Shattered Bones, and Shattered Bones is obviously a, a, a pretty solid item, Item, it works well, but what makes it even better is because of that second secret room where I found the Eye of Belial, these two items synergize really really well together. And now suddenly every time we hit an enemy, not only do we do damage to them and the tear splits, it also spawns more tears that are the Eye of the Be Belial tears, they do more damage and of course they go through multiple enemies, so they're essential like penetrative shots. So it's a good synergy, deals a lot of damage and it that did help us kind of carry the run. So like I said before, we didn't have a lot of tear delay, or at least a lot of tear delay upgrades or downgrades again, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but just having this combo of two items really did, I would cement this run as something really strong. So even though we only got Pentagram, it's basically our only damage upgrade, we were still able to get really fast throughout the rest of the run. And we also got a lot, I would say, utility items. So for example, we had room for two trinkets, uh, we got a, a lot of items that kind of synergize well with what we have. Uh, in, in the case of Sulfuric Acid, for example, that allows us to kind of explore and open secret rooms for free. Uh, and because, of course, every time we shoot, our tears split into more shots, and those shots can also be corrosive and then, then you know it just kind of works well with what we have at this point and the later on we also got something uh, uh not something but we got room back and obviously room back is also really good because not only does it give you some of those temporary invisibility shields but you can also use the ever runes to break the game or maybe something else to just kind of go ahead uh, i think when i got judas a shadow here i was excited because it felt like this was the real first dps upgrade but I did make a little bit of a mistake. So you can see that that particular, I mean, you saw where when I was actually in that particular room, is I tried to play the, the blood bank, right? And it was behind the spikes, and I was just kind of running into the blood bank, just trying to actually sacrifice, sacrifice my health without incurring any damage penalty, so I would be able to respawn. And that worked well, of course, until it exploded and paid out with uh, with the blood bag. So then, of course, I picked it up accidentally and I walked on the spike. So I figured that was not going to be the best choice. I just went to the curse room and kind of sacrificed the rest of myself there. And I thought it was going to be a good choice, not only because it basically doubles our damage, but also because uh, we have this, uh, at least two out of the three needles that we need for, I mean, syringes, uh, that we need for the spawn transformation, but we also have uh, damage upgrades and we have the devil card. So having a two damage multiplier will definitely not only increase 
increase our damage but by twofold but it also will help us whenever we get something more or maybe any more damage upgrades later on in the run obviously being at 15 damage with this energy at this point is really strong but when we get to things like harsh or maybe even beyond it might not be enough right so we kind of need to warrant our future so i felt like just sacrificing for dark judas as fast as possible is going to be the best choice of actually not only getting two boss rush without taking too much hits because we're going to be doing so much damage but also we kind of provide us for the future and of course as i said before we did have two syringes uh, we picked up the third one and now we have spawn so that also gave us like plus two damage and because of the damage multiplier now it's at plus four damage so we're just kind of going through the run and cruising without worrying about anything really so the only thing we kind of have to look out for now is just to not take too much damage we basically can't die because we have the relic we also have a nice way to like i said before to go to secret rooms to second secret rooms so that's a really nice way not only to get more consumables that lie in there but also does allow us to maybe just get a little bit more exploration bonus i don't think i missed one secret or second secret room on this floor i mean not on this floor on this run uh which is obviously very good and it did allow us i think to to kind of stay ahead of the competition or maybe at least people who took a different path in one of the runs and i, I always say this but sulfuric acid with basically any their combination is just so really good because it does allow you to find all of those things for essentially free it doesn't maybe help us th out that much uh, in, in regard of i would say anything else it doesn't really have any fun synergies but the fact it's at least a little bit of a damage upgrade is definitely something that i think just warrants picking it up whenever you see it the only thing i hope for is that maybe the harsh here would have a bit a little bit of a better items than maybe we would find a yarrow rune or maybe like a two off something card so we can actually duplicate it later on with a yarrow rune uh, but i wasn't too concerned we had the algae June, I knew that as soon as we actually entered the harsh fight and then we, when we got to the void there were gonna be plenty of opportunities to get something really good out of it and maybe we can just not break the game but just try to get more consumables that way so it was just kind of saving just kind of using my dry baby here to kind of keep safe uh, from um the, the shots of the harsh and because we had the uh, by io belial tears alongside with shattered bones we were really effective at dealing with the enemies that he spawns and that's usually the biggest problems with harsh right you have to deal with all of those little enemies and when you deal with them he comes back up again or at least that's true for the blue guys and when you do that uh, he becomes much more manageable and if he does only of this attack which is continuous shots through the rest to, to the left and the right side of the screen and they come on the other side uh, that is actually quite i would say beatable and if you know kind of how to dodge it in a right way uh, you you can go through the fight without i would say incurring any damage or at least not too much if you're very careful i also had the algorithm remember so i just used that at the end of the fight to kind of warrant not taking any damage and it was a zero hit harsh fight and that's always exciting when it happens so we did get go through the entirety of the void it was very boring like nothing too spectacular happened i did find the two of spades and i duplicated with a yeah rune so i used that twice and the end you know we just kind of quit the run there because there was only delirium left so i just figured it was gonna be a good place to stop it we're at the 19th place and I think I was fourth on the greed, greed but leaderboards, which is obviously a really, really good score. Our exploration bonus is really high. Our shred bonus could have been a bit higher, but I think it's still decent. And our item penalty is, I think, on the low side. The only problem I really had is damage penalty, but the majority of that came first from my mistakes for walking into the spikes, but also because I had so much speed, it's very hard to dodge. You know, we have a lot of velocity and it's hard to slow down in the right nick of time, right? And you know, it, it just happens. This is what Isaac is. But in the end, what matters more, I think, is the fact that we actually we got to the end we managed to get a good score and the fact we had a good time so with that said i hope you enjoyed this one guys and i hope to see you next time